Um, so like, where are you at as far as like the success with the dilapidated home? It's like going back to that, like, where are we at with that? I know that's something that you've been fighting <laughs> constantly and why, like, give the people the information why you've been fighting that and why that's so important. Uh, dilapidated homes will bring, undoubtedly bring crime. Yes. They bring uh, property values down. Mm -hmm. um, they bring, you know, the people who live next to it, they have to deal with infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure is not the word I'm looking for, but they're dealing with structural issues to their homes, whether it's uh, heat and air, electrical with rats and trash and stuff like that are all piled up. Uh, they often get burnt down and it puts a strain on our fire department. And we have you know, the busiest fire department in the entire county here. Yeah. Um, we've made a lot of progress and it's not something you do on your own. You, yeah. You've got to get the county involved and the county's only allotted so much money. Um, and we, uh, you know, a lot of people will complain and say, I'm gonna get backlash for this. But we got our fair share. Every time grant money has rolled around, it, it's because we were petitioning. Right. You know, we were we were making sure. You know, what, what is the, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not going to shut up. Right. You know, and there's still you know there's still some houses that have been promised to me for eight years that's still standing. Wow. Right next to our elementary school. Wow. And I, everybody promises to tear it down. Everybody right. promises, and it ain't been done yet. Yeah. And you know, eventually we're gonna steamroll something ourselves at this point. But <laughs> it's like it. You'll come through Homeland Park and you'll see the dilapidated homes and you're like, wow. But the thing is, they, those weren't standing when we were fighting those other ones. Yeah. It's quick to lose vision of like, oh man, look at these empty lots where these houses were and how beautiful that is now. Mm -hmm. Because now you see another eyesore sort that's of already popped up. Because you've got a lot of older homes and when someone passes away, maybe somebody doesn't want the house anymore or it sits or maybe there's no relative you know, to take care of it. Right. And the next thing you know, somebody's done... You know, once they're in there, they, it's hard to get them out. Hard to get them out, it's right? Hard, and then, at the same time, you, you, it's hard to find that balance of like, you gotta love them at the same time. Yeah, you still have to love them, but I mean, you're not God didn't make you to be ran over. Right. You gotta make sure that things uh, are in your community are safe. Like, yeah. You know, if people have to, you know, if you gotta put them in jail, you gotta put them in jail. Like your safety and your family safety and your community safety is very important. Yeah, it is. It is, it is very important. It's. Uh... You know, it's a balance. And once again, that's another thing that takes community to take care of. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's other avenues other than them staying in those homes that are, you know, that are being more dilapidated homes, I'll say. Like, it's other options where, you know, there are, you know, there's Haven and Rex, there's uh, the one uh, down the street from the stop a minute. What is it called? Hey, uh, uh, I can, it's, it's blanking my mind, but there's places and there's there's organizations that can help in that issue. But it takes community to hold them accountable to being there, and you know, just keeping the community safe. It's a balance, like you said. Like you got to take care of them, but at the same time, you got to take care of your community too. And it's like, man, people pay for you know stuff in their house, and it shouldn't be the fact that you know people are coming taking those things and you know from first hand I've seen that happen you know <laughs> yeah, I've seen you know we, we brand some people off in the yeah. neighborhood because yeah. of you know just keeping people stuff safe and people mm -hmm. who can't fend for themselves so man that's very important man and, yeah, yeah, that's right we gotta you look it up <laughs> we have a newspaper article like uh, right right well, we right, got, right. Uh, kids bike got stolen yeah, yeah. yeah. kids bike got stolen yep. We, yep. we went and purchased a new bike yep. I mean I'm not bragging on it that's a that's a that's another thing I've had a hard time with is if you want your community, and this is what I'm learning now. Yeah. If you want your group to be noticed, you have to publicize. And it don't feel right if you, it doesn't feel right. Like we, we raised some money uh, to get Christmas for some children at school. Yeah. And I took the camera and the mics and, you know, it wasn't for glory, but I got to show people what we're doing with their money. Right. I got to show right. people. I mean, you can look at the books all day, but I got to go. Me and me and uh, a board member Dakota, we got to go and deliver it firsthand. Yeah, and and see and feel that, you know. Yep. You just knew it happened. Right. Right. To, 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 to expose it and, and show it, it's not bragging. And I've had a hard time because it, it feels egotistical. It, but it's real though. Yeah, it's, it's real. And I know where my heart's at on it. But it's, it's I'm still learning. I feel like maybe we'd be ahead more. And I've been doing this more all along, but I, it's a balance, you know, and it, it's. It, it comes down to your personality. Like I'm, I'm very conscientious of, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like that information is important to to share and, and bring yeah. other people in to motivate other people to yeah. do the same thing. But earlier you spoke about the safety in your community. So how are the children affected and what programs are in place in your community for them? Yeah, nothing, that, <laughs> yeah. nothing that I'm aware of. It's my biggest beef, man. Yeah. It's my biggest beef, man. Yeah. We did, um, we worked with... Um, Brock Elder, the county, to have a Wellington historical park redone. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you came to that. We yeah. had, I think it's the second or third basketball court like that in the country yeah. with the soccer goals that come out of the ground. And the kids are utilizing it. Yeah. They really are. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah I've been, I took my kids out there quite a few it's, times. Everybody was, and this is another, this is another stumbling block I'm talking about. Everybody's, oh, man, they just going to tear it up. they just going to tear But that's parks in general. In general, exactly. Rich neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods. But you know what? There's, as of today, ain't the water around, but as of today, <laughs> nobody has vandalized that. Right. The, the children there are like really appreciative. Like the other day, there's a young Hispanic kid. Uh, I was coming, he was coming out of CVS and he's pointing at me. He's got this big smile. And I'm like, I'm looking because he thinks he saw like uh, you know, a superhero or a famous person or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's got me confused with somebody. <laughs> I ain't nobody, you know? <laughs> And uh, I was, I was like, looking. He was like, "You the mayor?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And I, I remember his face. And he was like, "He said I'm, I was the." He said I was at the opening of the, of the court. And I was like, "Oh, I remember you." Yeah. And it blew my mind because there were profession, there were retired professional soccer players there. Wow. And the kid came up to me with a soccer ball and asked me to autograph it. You know, and I'm six foot four, so yeah. <laughs> you know, and six four is not tall in the NBA. I'm a little guy. Yeah. But when you know you're a kid, six four, six I'm four the longest to you. Yeah. And I was like, I think you want to talk to those guys. Cause like, he was like, nah, nah, you the mayor. You're the one who's been working. Like, you did the videos to expose all this. Like, yeah. And I was like, man, like, it just touched my heart. Yeah. And then we took, like, this, you know, we took a picture. I signed the ball for him. And we all got on the thing, took a picture. Word. We got this on our, our social media account. And for him to even remember my face almost a year later. Right. And that it made an impact. I was like, see, that's what I wanted. Yep. I wanted, like, to, to leave that impact. I want my, that, that's what I want my legacy to be. Not for myself. Because I feel like that that's what I need to leave behind as my purpose. Right. Because that's what God has is, is pushed me to be. Yeah. And, you know, when people go look me up and say, oh, man, he ain't that good of a Christian. Oh, look, man, he said a cuss word on social media. <laughs> you know what, man, I mess up all the time. But, you know, I, God forgives me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't get into the whole political, I mean, the religious thing of it. But I'm not running around doing what I used to do. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it, it's funny, man, because people will people will look at something negative or they what they deem negative and judge you solely off of that. But like, <laughs> so they won't like, look at what you do good yeah. and judge you solely yeah. off of that. It's like, man, come on, man, let's let's be real. I know me personally, I got too many issues of my own to be worried about it's somebody like, else's. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a, at, at, and at heart, you know, I'm a clown. Yeah, and you, yeah. You, you've been around me, like you know, like I will troll. Somebody to sleep. I, I just enjoy trolling. Like, yeah, and I have a hard time balancing that because you know, not only am I in my best position, I'm a board member, you know, somewhere else. I'm also yeah. an elected official, right. board member, right? And you know, but and a lot of times I question myself, and I'm talking to members and I'm talking to people in my community. I'm like, man, I feel like I should. Like, when do I grow up? I'm 42. <laughs> but you know something about that though, Walt, is that people, you're approachable yeah. because. You're not like, okay, I gotta look like I'm better than everybody. Yeah, and that's what be I was stiff to and not, you know, laugh and joke and hang out with people. And that separates the community because people like that feel you feel like, man, I can't even talk to this person because yeah, he's yeah. not a person, you know, he's yeah. just a you know, yeah. I mean, you know how you see politicians and, and people who are in, who are in the community and politics yeah. and stuff, man. They feel you look at them as if they're unapproachable. So I think that your style is your biggest, is what allows you to make the impact that you make. Yeah. To just pull up on us while we're chilling on keys and be like, what's up, y'all? Yeah. Dap us up, have a conversation, and it's not like, oh, I'm going to walk to the other meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, man, nah, see, what's up, bro? That would you ruin, know? you know what I'm saying? That would ruin me. That's not, that would ruin, I, and like people have told me, like, you, you can't change your personality. Your personality is what made you approachable. Like, you're talking about approachable for this, you know, for what you do. Right. Like, because I felt like if people had to, straighten up the way to act because I come around, I'm not 
I'm not being me. Right. Because I always said I break bread with anyone. Right. Yeah, I don't care right. who they are. I break bread with anyone. Yeah. You know? and, and you have to be able to communicate with the community. It's like yeah. if everything you said and did went over everybody's head, like you just used a bunch of big words and you know a bunch of stuff that people don't understand. How are they even gonna? How are you gonna be able to connect with them? It's gonna yeah. be like I don't understand the words you said, but I'll shake my head because it sounds really correct. Keep it <laughs> yeah. moving, you know. Right. Versus yeah, yeah. just having a regular conversation and being cool and being like, okay, I get what you're saying because you you you're from where I'm from, and so I get what you're saying, mm-hmm. and you can communicate with me effectively. And people who have never been from a neighborhood like HP can't understand how to communicate with people who live in HP because you're always going to look at it in a negative way. And one thing I appreciate is you always fight for that to be like, nah, don't do HP like that. Nah, we got a lot of good people yeah. within our community. And I'm like I say, I'm from Maryland. And so, you know, shout out to my boy T and, you know, everybody on Keys. Like, that was like my family, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, coming from here. So I feel rooted in this community. And so, like, I always give you your respect, man, and your props for cleaning up the neighborhood. Just, you know, walking up and down the street and picking up trash. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, those are things you don't have to do those things. Yeah. But, you know, those are things that are important. So I rock with that. 